Want to hear a secret? If your family loves game night as much as mine, you should check out Kohl's. You can find amazing deals and new ways to keep everyone entertained. I got board games for under $20, 20% off a popcorn maker because snacks are a must. A $15.99 blanket for cuddling up. Then I also got an extra 20% off and Kohl's cash. So, yeah, pretty sure I already won game night. Select styles, 20% offer ends March 14th. Some exclusions apply. See store or kohls.com for details. Psst, want to hear a secret? If your family loves game night as much as mine, you should check out Kohl's. You can find amazing deals and new ways to keep everyone entertained. I got board games for under $20, 20% off a popcorn maker, because snacks are a must. A $15.99 blanket for cuddling up. Then I also got an extra 20% off and Kohl's cash. So, yeah, pretty sure I already won game night. Select styles, 20% offer ends March 14th. Some exclusions apply. See store or kohls.com for details. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. What's up, everybody? So, if you missed the live stream last night, you missed a doozy. We had quite the adventure. Had a couple of surprise visitors pop into the stream, and we talked about everything Epstein and everything else you could possibly imagine, it seems like. Fantastic time was had by all. And it was, as usual, very informative with a lot of engagement with the listeners and the listeners engaging with each other, which is certainly something that I am very happy to see. Because, as I always say, one voice means nothing, right? They could ignore one voice very easily. But a million or ten million voices, well, that's a little harder to ignore. And while, obviously, there's not 10 million voices, but there is a growing chorus of people who have had enough. People who have seen what is going on here and realize it for the travesty that it is. This isn't just some, you know, pay-to-play scheme. This isn't some get-rich-quick Ponzi scheme where they pilfer billions. This is a human trafficking ring being run at the highest levels of power on multiple continents. That is exactly what we are staring at right now. And it would be naive to think this is the only operation like this that's in effect. But when it comes to these people and the criminal behavior that they were engaging in, it is just beyond the pale of next-level evil. And just, just think about for a second. Don't even think about or just for a moment compartmentalize. And just think about the girls from Palm Beach alone, the high school-aged girls, 14, 15, junior high school-aged, who were abused by this man. Just that alone is so disgustingly heinous that it should have put him and all of his friends in prison for the rest of their lives. But no. That was allowed to occur. The prosecutors in Florida looked the other way. The prosecutors in Florida worked hand in hand with the defense to defame the girls and ruin their credibility. And after that occurred, and all of those girls were victimized and abused by Epstein and his cohorts, the reign of terror continued. And it wasn't just Jeffrey Epstein, and it wasn't just Ghislaine Maxwell either. They had a group of people working for them And the person we're going to talk about tonight is one of their top lieutenants. Oh, she'll say she's not. She'll say that, oh, she's a victim too. But if you read all of the articles and you look at all of the circumstantial evidence, it's quite obvious to me that Sarah Kellen Vickers was an integral part 
of Jeffrey Epstein's criminal enterprise, and she benefited greatly from the ill-gotten gains that it was churning out. Still to this day, she benefits from her past experiences with Jeffrey Epstein. What do you think? All of those contacts she made while she was working for Epstein connected to Ghislaine Maxwell's hip? You think all of those contacts just went away? Of course they didn't. Then you add to that the fact that she's married to an ex-NASCAR driver. So yeah, Sarah Kellen Vickers has been living the high life, folks. She's really been living it up. In fact, the article we're going to talk about tonight, she's had such a rough life and she's been victimized so much that she's in a dispute with her neighbors over a $10 million NYC penthouse. $10 million. But she didn't benefit from her time with Jeffrey Epstein. Not at all. Financially or otherwise. It is absurd. It is absurd for anybody to think that this lady, of all of them, of all of the core four in my opinion, that this lady wasn't attached to the hip and didn't know what was going on. That is an impossible sell in my opinion. You just listen to what the survivors have to say about Kellen. You just listen to what was said about her in court papers. And you just listen to what all of the people who were abused by Epstein have to say about Sarah Kellen Vickers. And you understand pretty quickly that you're dealing with another sick and deranged individual. And now she is in such a bad way, folks. Her life is so horrible that she's having an argument over a $10 million penthouse. Talk about first world problems. She shouldn't be worried about a $10 million penthouse. In fact, she should be worried about putting, putting that money into an account to pay for her defense. Because in my opinion, she's going to need it. Our article this morning is from the Daily Mail. Headline, Ghislaine Maxwell's lieutenant who recruited girls for Epstein is fighting with neighbors who are furious over construction at her $10 million New York City penthouse. This article was authored by Keith Griffith. So it must be nice, huh? Imagine those were the problems that you had in the middle of a pandemic. While most of you who are overseas... Anyway, London, elsewhere, you're locked down. But Sarah Kellen Vickers, uh, she's in the middle of a huge argument over a $10 million townhouse construction at her townhouse. Talk about absolutely ridiculous. And that's what it is, folks. Absolutely ridiculous. All right, to the article. A woman accused of helping Ghislaine Maxwell recruit sex slaves for Jeffrey Epstein is now in a squabble with neighbors at the ritzy Manhattan condo where she lives with her NASCAR driver husband. So her and her husband, Brian Vickers, been living the high life. You know, everything's been fantastic for them. $10 million uh, townhouse, traveling around the world, living it up, popping the bubbly. I'm sure they're eating, you know, fantastic $400 a night meals. You know, just living the high life. Meanwhile, all of the people who were abused at Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell's hands, and in some accounts, at Sarah Kellen Vickers' hands as well, according to some allegations, while all of those people are left to pick up the pieces. Bipedal Serpent Jr. over here is moving around unimpeded. That two-tier justice system sure is something, isn't it, folks? Sarah Kellen, 41, and her husband, Brian Vickers, 37, are the subject of ire among neighbors at the Soho condo building on Green Street, where Vickers leads the condo board, the New York Post reported on Saturday. So, you mean to tell me, in the whole entire community, that Vickers is the only person you guys could have, could find to lead the condo board? Why? Because he drove a car around the track in circles? That makes him capable of being some sort of... Uh, 
um, uh, home association authority. I don't even understand why somebody like that would be chosen, especially considering people know the deal. What, the people in the building have no idea what his wife is allegedly involved in? But now they're worried, right? They're worried because there's some sort of construction. They had no problem living next to these people beforehand, though, right? And it's just typical of the serpentine behavior of the so-called elite and the rich, how they move. Until it directly affects them with some sort of silly problem, then they don't give one single damn. Not one damn. And that's what we see all the time out of these sorts of people who live in these houses. Oh, there's homelessness? Well, as long as it's not near our house, we don't care. Oh, there's a drug problem in the neighborhood? Well, it's not near our house. We don't care. Oh, we're living next to uh, uh, an alleged human trafficker? Bah, we don't care. The second they start doing some construction, though, and start making the neighbor's life a a little difficult, maybe, or it's a a little loud, forget it. Now they care all of a sudden. And that is the whole entire so-called elite in a nutshell. They don't care about the problems that we face. They don't care about the problems of society, even the ones who are elected to do so. They care about their own nonsense at all times. We're back burner. Neighbors told the Post they are fed up with the couple's constant noisy re- renovations in their $10 million penthouse, as well as massive fee assessments imposed by vicars and other board members. So that's interesting. High fees, exorbitant fees. I wonder if any of that money is being pocketed by vicars and the other board members. Do they have some sort of hustle that they're working on here? Some sort of Ponzi scheme, perhaps? Of course, I have no evidence of that, but if they have all of these exorbitant fees that people are being, um, you know, uh, complaining about, where is the money going? Is there a full accounting of it? Has it been audited? Pretty interesting to think about. Kellen met Epstein when she was 18 and spent around a decade working as his personal assistant. She was named in court documents a potential co-conspirator in the late financier, pedophiles, sex trafficking plots, but has always insisted that she was a victim of sick abuse and not a participant. And again, that's going to be the cover story for people like her, right? She's going to try and use that, saying that she was a victim of Jeffrey Epstein, to try and build some, some good grace, to try and build some credit with the public. Because she understands that she is in severe jeopardy here, folks. She is in severe jeopardy here. All of the evidence is stacked against her. Just like with the rest of these people. The evidence is stacked a mile high when it comes to the core four and the people that were closest to Jeffrey Epstein. And Sarah Kellen Vickers trying to position herself as a victim of Jeffrey Epstein's when she never came forward after the first arrest. She didn't come forward after the second arrest. She didn't come forward after his alleged suicide. But yet now we should think that her story is believable and that it's something with legs. Sorry, I do not believe her. Okay, I do not believe her. Point blank, period. Kellen reportedly cut ties with Epstein after his first arrest in Florida in 2008 and gained immunity through the deal he struck with prosecutors. In 2013, she married her longtime boyfriend, Vickers. The whole immunity deal, it just rankles me. We discussed this a little bit last night on the live stream. It really bothers me, the whole entire thing. The fact that it was even put into play, the fact that someone like Sarah Kellen Vickers was given protection through it, and the fact that it gives protection to people who are named or unnamed. I don't even understand how that's possible. It's like a precedent that has never been set before. How many times have we heard from prosecutors who were completely mind-boggled over it? And somehow it has not been done away with yet. Somehow we're still waiting for the 11th Circuit to come to a decision? Over a month ago that they've heard this case. Now, let's go. Let's get something cracking here. Little has been seen of Kellen over the years, but she and Vickers reappeared in New York after Maxwell was arrested in July. 
It has led to speculation that Kellen might testify against Maxwell, who is charged with enticement of minors, sex trafficking of children, and perjury. Maxwell has pleaded not guilty. Now, it's quite possible, right, that Sarah Kellen Vickers is already talking. I've talked about this numerous times, and it would fall under the sealed indictments that are still working their way through the system. Now, has she signed a proffer agreement? Has she sat down and spilled the beans to authorities? I don't know. But my speculation is that if it's possible and it's been offered, that she has taken them up on that offer. Because she understands that she's not innocent here. All of these people understand that. And you're going to see it by how many of these people end up taking deals or attempt to get deals. And it's going to be a lot, right? A lot of people are going to try and roll over on each other. You see it in these kind of crimes all the time, even with the most hardened criminals. Nobody wants to be left holding that hot potato. So they all start ratting on each other in hopes of peeling a few years off of their sentences. And I would not be shocked to see the same thing here. You know, something like Sarah Kellen Vickers looking at 45, 50 years or something like that, 35 years, whatever it may be. And then they peel off 10, perhaps, if she testifies against Maxwell. And that's how these kind of things work, right? But it really all depends on how much they need to send uh, Maxwell up the river at this point. I would think that they have plenty of evidence And these sort of people that are willing to come forward just bolster the case at this point. I don't think somebody like Sarah Kellen Vickers turning state's evidence would make or break the case where we're at right now, considering all of the evidence and the firsthand accounts of the alleged victims who were willing to come forward and speak on the record and testify against Maxwell. I think that is a huge, huge weight that is being hung around the defense right now. Meanwhile, neighbors at the 14-unit Mercer Green condo building, where Lindsay Lohan once lived, tell the Post that they are fed up with the construction racket from Kellen and Vickers' penthouse. It's the other homeowners that have to put up with it, one condo owner complained, noting that the couple are rarely in town. And yeah, that's typical of, of, of these folk, kind of rich folks, right? Why should they stick around and be inconvenienced if they can split out to the Hamptons? Now they got a helicopter service in Westchester, New York. You can go to the Westchester airport and you can take a helicopter for 175 bucks into Manhattan instead of taking the Metro North or driving in. And that's how these people live their lives. Oh, 175 bucks for a flight to uh, the city? Bah, perfect. Right up, the, right up uh, my alley. Meanwhile, 175 bucks to a lot of people right now is the difference between keeping their lights on. And that's just how these people act and how they roll. And they come from their, you know, their gilded towers. And the rest of us, we're nothing to them. Even their fellow rich people mean nothing to them. So they got all this construction going on, right? And they're not even in town. They're like, screw it. We're going to dip out to the Hamptons or wherever it is these people are going. And we'll just let all this racket and all this construction and all of this noise cause all sorts of chaos for our neighbors. According to a lawsuit from one renovation firm alleging unpaid bills, the work on the couple's penthouse included a shoe pull-out wardrobe cabinet and teak adornments to the shower door. I mean, really? A shoe pull-out wardrobe cabinet? I got some breaking news for you, bipedal serpent junior. You're not going to need that where you're going. Bologna sandwiches and government-issued dress uh, dress clothes. That's what you're going to be wearing and looking forward to moving forward. The entire building has been plagued with constant construction work for years. Dating back to before Vickers became board president in 2015, leading to inconvenience and high fees for owners. One condo owner told the Post that they've been charged $100,000 in assessments in the last five years. $100,000 in assessments in the last five years. Who in their right mind, honestly, at this point, who in their right mind would move to New York City, Manhattan, and live on top of other people in the middle of a pandemic, pay millions and millions of dollars to do so, and then at the same time have shitbag neighbors who are destroying their condo and a building where construction has been going nonstop for years? 
Why would anyone pay millions of dollars to live like that? Come on out to Nevada. We got plenty of open spaces, plenty of property for sale, and I think that you would find yourself much happier than living on top of people like rats in a colony. A lawyer acting on behalf of Mercer Green Condominium and the board said that its members have never improperly caused an assessment to be imposed on all owners for personal gain or engaged in executing improper contracts for construction work. Oh yeah, definitely sounds like some sort of hustle is going on in this building. Some sort of grifting, some sort of stealing, and some sort of reappropriating. Now, of course, I don't have evidence of that. These people are slick, and I've never even heard about this situation until just now. But it certainly seems like to me that all of these fees, all of these assessments, all of these little processes that are going on by the the board here, they don't seem to be correct. And obviously, the tenants feel the same way, considering there's lawyers involved. Vickers did not respond to an inquiry from the Post and could not be reached by DailyMail.com. He last raced in 2016, stepping back due to health issues. It's unclear whether he intends to return to the sport. Epstein's controversial 2008 federal non-prosecution agreement extended immunity to four potential co-conspirators, the core four, including Sarah Kellen and fellow executive assistants, Adriana Ross, Leslie Groff, and Nadia Marcinkova. And for those of you who have not been listening to the podcast for a while, you might be new. I call these people the core four, meaning Jeffrey Epstein's core associates. They were the glue that held everything together, the straw that stirred the drink. And now that Maxwell's in prison, jail anyway, uh, uh, Brunel is in jail, it falls on the prosecution to wrap this up and bring in the core four and charge them for the crimes that they committed while they were working for Jeffrey Epstein. It meant Kellen could not face federal charges, despite multiple girls describing how she would book them for massages and greet them as they arrived at Epstein's Palm Beach mansion before escorting them upstairs and laying out massage oils. So she was aiding and abetting this. She knew what they were going to be, that they were going to be abused. And she went as far as laying out the massage oils. Give me a break already. Anyone who thinks that Sarah Kellen Vickers is innocent, anyone who thinks that Sarah Kellen Vickers is not up to her neck in Jeffrey Epstein's crimes, they're fooling themselves. According to police reports, one survivor recalled Kellen and Maxwell instructing her on how to please their depraved boss. Others claim the pair had warned them not to speak out about what was happening. That's called intimidating a witness. That is called a federal crime. That is also a RICO charge. Again, the question is, when are those RICO charges coming? In the subsequent subsequent slew of civil lawsuits, Kellen was referred to as an assistant to Ghislaine, her second-in-command, and even the bipedal serpent's lieutenant, or, as I'll be calling her lately, bipedal serpent junior. Sarah was really running that organization, bringing girls and getting them in and out of the Palm Beach home, Spencer T. Coven, a lawyer representing several accusers, told the New York Times. And again, we're talking about the Palm Beach situation mainly here, right? We're talking about those little high school age girls. We're talking about the girls from the junior high schools in Palm Beach. That's what Sarah Kellen was involved in. That's what the bipedal serpent junior is accused of. She was also well compensated. Epstein divulged in a 2005 interview that he paid his closest assistants $200,000 a year. And again, other assistants in the same positions roughly make about $65,000 to $75,000 a year. Yet Jeffrey Epstein was paying close to a million dollars for his four assistants. Ask yourselves, why in the hell would he be doing that? Epstein died behind bars in 2019 in what authorities ruled a suicide, allegedly. Maxwell is currently being held without bail and faces trial in July. 
and speculation has swirled that federal investigators will target other assistants in Epstein's orbit. 100% speculation has swirled because where there's smoke, folks, there's fire. And we have heard from the prosecutors, we have seen in the court documents that this was not something that was done on their own. This was done in coordination with each other, and this is obviously, obviously a criminal enterprise at work. Epstein died behind, uh, behind bars in 2019 in what authorities ruled a suicide. Maxwell is currently being held without bail and faces trial in July. And speculation has swirled that federal investigators will target other assistants in Epstein's orbit. But Kellen has spoken out to deny the allegations that she aided in Epstein's devious sex schemes. I've been made out to be such a monster, but it's not true. I'm a victim of Jeffrey Epstein. I was raped and abused weekly, she told The Sun last month. Again, I highly doubt it. All right, I highly doubt it. I'm I'm sorry, but I, I don't believe anything that the bipedal serpent is saying. Why is she saying this now? Why didn't she come out the first time when Epstein was arrested and, and, and pour her heart out to the authorities? I was abused. I was raped. I was forced into this. She didn't. She parlayed that relationship even after Epstein was arrested and she's still benefiting from it. So save the sob story, bipedal serpent junior. Kellen's devoutly religious parents, Thomas and Mary Kellen, told Daily, uh, DailyMail.com in July that their daughter was naive and vulnerable when she met Epstein. What happened to all those girls is horrendous, but I do feel that Sarah was also a victim. I'm not a psychologist or a, psych, psych, a, psychi, a psychiatrist, but I can see she was maneuvered or brainwashed, said Mary. Sorry, I don't believe it. If, again, if that was the case, why not come out when she had the chance? Why wait until now when all of the cards begin to fall down? It's not a good look for her. Thomas and Mary expressed fear that after Maxwell's arrest, their daughter would be next. A fate, they insist, she does not deserve. I just hope someone doesn't go and kill her, Mary said. There are a lot of prominent, powerful people out there that don't want anything said. That is a damning indictment from her parents, right? A bunch of powerful people that might kill her? But she doesn't know anything, right? She's just innocent in all of this. She was just a victim. I'm sorry, folks, but I'm not buying that. I am not going to believe for a second that she was simply a victim of Jeffrey Epstein. She is someone who benefited from ill-gotten gains. She benefited on the back of the abuse he was committing. And now, when the karma train has left the station and it is rolling directly down the tracks at her, she is now a victim? Sorry, folks. I'm not buying it. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B O B B Y. C-A-P-U-C-C-I at ProtonMail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, I'll be back later on, and we will pick up where we left off. I hope you all have a fantastic day. At Ease, we're all about calculating the best high for you. Ran out of shows to watch for the second time this week? Order an Indica pre-roll. Social distance park hang? Pair that awkward picnic with a vaporizer. See, we're like your weed guy, but 420% nerdier. So just worry about when you're going to take that edible and let us do the rest. Ease, highly calculated cannabis delivery. Get 30% off your first order with promo code NERD at ease.com. That's E-A-Z-E dot com. We each have our own destination getaway, an escape unfettered by daily obligation, where you're free to simply unwind and just be you, to be one with your imagination, where you and only you decide what constitutes a win. Welcome to Shumash Casino Resort. Welcome to freedom. Always game responsibly. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Must be 21 years of age or older.